Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to lucky episode 13 of the Tamiya F4B build series. Now, so far we've been through a whole lot with this build, from getting the ordnance all ready, to playing around with the cockpit, to getting it built, to getting it painted, putting decals on, getting the decals kind of where they need to be in terms of working the carrier film in and blending it in with the paint surface, and most recently doing a whole bunch of corrosion control touch-up sprays, which are fun and colorful on the underside here of Snek. So what is up next? Well, what is up next is oils and essentially weathering, like putting smuts on this thing. And I'm going to start on the underside because honestly, the underside is where I am fucking terrified. So not only do I have that video from, uh, from on target, you know, from archival footage from these things flying around in Vietnam of, you know, the ordnance guys underneath loading up a sidewinder on one of these stations. I believe it was this station. And you can see a bit of the plane around it. And holy God, is it filthy. It is nothing like white. And that's really tricky, to, really tricky to pull off. Have it look white, but also have like the streaks and the, and the smudges and the dirt and the grime and the grease, all that stuff all over it. I also have this photo of Showtime 100 from the bottom that again shows these planes were not clean. Uh, but curiously, you know, you would think you would see a lot of shit back around, you know, the, the vent doors here and the brakes and the gear, you know, the gear bays. And this is where the engines are. So you would imagine, you know, fluids leaking out, seeping through panel lines, whatnot. And you do see some of that for sure. But you see a whole lot of shit right up in here. You know, you've got the nose gear causing something. I don't know if there's like some sort of coolant system in here, something leaking, who knows, um, but just filthy, just covered in shit. And you also have, you know, like the, the tie down hooks right here, also a filthy, filthy area, uh, basically black in those photos. So yeah, a lot of stuff to deal with, a lot of filthy grossness to, to really nail down there and to get this party started what i'm gonna do is just get some of this going with some black oil brusher so you know their silly mascara bottle thing um mainly because this stuff is simple <laughs> like it doesn't take a lot of thought to get it down to get it working the way i want it to so just kind of throwing some dots out there and I'll come back and I'll make this a bit something else as I, as I need to. Basically, we got some dots. Let's zoom in for effect, shall we? And then with a just nasty, just beat the shit brush. Just kind of coming in here and doing a little bit of stabby stab. And then because this is a flatter surface, we need to get the brush wet with a bit of thinner. I think the my favorite thing about the Showtime 100 photo is if you look at it, it's this gross, right? But the, the main nose gear door, fine. It's like clean and white, absolute stark contrast to everything else going on down here. Now I would say on a lot of aircraft, you know, from this time period or even modern aircraft, whenever you see heavy staining up around the nose, it's usually firing the gun, but the F-4B didn't have a main gun. So who knows? <laughs> who knows what the hell's going on, right? Yeah, so far that's looking pretty nice and nasty. Sponge it up just a bit. So that's heading in the direction I want to be going in. Okay. So 
a little bit more action. Let's bust into some more precise brushwork this time out. So one particular challenge of a white underside like this is getting it dingy and grimy without completely obscuring it. And, you know, we've got the dirtier shit going on right behind the, no the nose gear door, but back aft, I just want it to be generally grimy. And a great way to do that is to use, again, this is one of my favorite dark horse materials out there, is Guns Mr. Weathering Color, in this case, multi-black. Just get some on the brush. Come on, focus, you piece of shit. Get some on the brush. Just dabby dab it around. There's a piece of lint that's not fun. Okay. Anyway, just do this, right? And then. Get some not odorless enamel or not odorless mineral spirits, not you know, odorless enamel thinner. Guns, Mister Weathering color thinner. This stuff I am convinced is a blend of odorless mineral spirits and naphtha. But what happens when you put this shit down is it spreads out in interesting ways, right? Check that out. And now. Got that. You grab your Deerfoot stippler and then you just kind of start stabbing. And look at how interesting that gets. Grimy, but diffuse, but not completely blended. Doesn't really show huge evidence of brush marks. And if it ever starts to get a little bit too packed in for your taste, grab some more thinner and just keep the party going. See, like back here, I think I have a little bit more than I really want because I want these sides to kind of match. So we'll just do this. And to keep the brush marks from getting directional, you can rotate the stippler a little bit. And just like that, you've got a nice, diffused, interesting looking bit of grime going on. Where it's still white. It's not overly blended looking. It just kind of does what it needs to do. Okay, so we're a bit further along with the Phantom undersides, and as you can see, they're nice and grimy, 
but the grime is not universal. So right here along the center tunnel, again, going off of shit I've seen on reference photos, nice and grimy, also grimy down here, a bit less back here, but there are going to be a couple streaks and things happening too. And then I wanted a bit of grime out on the wings. The wing folds are way dirtier than they should be. Um, honestly, it's kind of hiding a, a lack of detail in here. Next time I build one of these Tamiya Phantoms, it will not have the wings folded. <laughs> That is a regret of mine, but at the same time, I get to show off the cool, you know, the cool touch-ups and whatnot, so bit of a blessing and a curse, but as you can see, like right in here, this is treated, it is grimy, but it is not obscuring the white in any way. You know, it still looks like the underside of an aircraft, it just looks like it's been through some shit, basically, and so that's kind of what I'm going for, so... Just to give you a sense of where this is all going, again, we've got the Mr. Weathering color, multi-black. I've also got some multi-gray. I'm really hesitant to bring any color into the bottom here because you just don't see it on reference photos. But we can play with gray. Gray is a little bit less intense than the black is, but same basic idea. So just do a few touches in there. Come in and grab some Mr. Weathering color thinner and basically just start getting that shit wet getting it to spread out again this Mr. Weathering color thinner I'm convinced is you know at least a good portion of its naphtha with some motorless mineral spirits because it doesn't quite cook off as fast as naphtha does but it also doesn't leave that greasy shit that mineral spirits can leave so it's a very good thing for getting these kind of blends going, getting a little bit of dirt and grime and shit. And so as you can see here on this flapper on, the very subtle, subtle shading, uh, you know, from the multi-gray, a little bit less intense than like the multi-black back here. But again, they're both, as long as you thin it enough, they're both very subtle. So... That's kind of how the underside is going. I'm going to finish this up and then we can flip it over and keep on going. Okay, next up, I'm going to see if I can try doing a little something with the heat stain back here because it came out a bit blah compared to what I had in my head. So we're going to see what we can get. First, I'm going to use some ABT 502 dust. Just using this neat. We'll see if this actually works. If not, we can just wipe it off. these lines with oils to give them just a little bit something else other than the two straight airbrushed masked off lines from earlier this might help obscure some of that give it a more organic feel first we got to get some shit on there This is one of my goals for 2023, is to really work on this whole idea of... I don't know, I guess you'd call it like precise oil work. I feel like I have a handle on getting, you know, nice diffuse grime and things like that, but heat staining effects, whew, they're... They terrify me, if I'm being honest. Especially on something like this where there's a very definite pattern at work. How the fuck do I pull this off? I need something that can blend, but I need something that doesn't blend as much as oils like to blend. Okay, so now that I've got a decent amount of material on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dry brush and just sweep it across. I 
filling that area up. And it looks like as I sweep it across, obviously we need more opacity across here. So back to my brush. And basically just keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. Come in and hit it again with that dry brush. Blending, adding, blending, adding. Okay, so I think this is in a somewhat decent place now. We've got... The problem is when I touch it too much, uh, it goes very opaque. Or not very opaque, very transparent, very quickly. So I'm just trying to maintain some of that tone there, but I've definitely broken up the lines a bit. Um, got it a bit kind of dirtier looking, and I think when it's back on its feet, that'll look just about right. Okay, so before I move on into much more of the heat shield and all the shit going on back here, I need to deal with stabilators, mainly because they need to be installed so I can get this thing back down here so I can get all the black on here without really having to touch it again. That's kind of the goal, right? So... To do that, I need to deal with these bare metal portions of stabilators. And looking at references of F4s, it's really fucking tough to figure out what's going on back here. But best that I can figure out, kind of the common consensus seems to be that there was a heat shielding putty type of thing applied to various panels and rivets in here basically to protect them from just the insane heat of sitting, you know, sitting your ass right here in the exhaust flow of two J79s. So you see on like these panels here, you know, and specifically on the panels on the stabilators as well, this like red putty like stuff in some of the actual panel lines gaps. And I'm hoping to maybe try to recreate that as well, but there's also shit going on with the rivets themselves. And from the best that I can understand, kind of the, you know, the, the winning argument to me at this point, without me knowing what the fuck is happening, is that that's, that same heat shielding stuff was applied and then kind of like scraped off, uh, you know, leaving it in the panel lines and things like that. And then as the jet flew, as things heated, the putty heated differently than the metal, and so you get these like weird sort of effects around the rivets and things like that. So what I'm going to do... This so let's slide this guy out of the way just a little bit so we've got somewhere to work. So I've been just trying to figure out how I want to do this. I tried a little bit down here with, uh, you know, I tried some oils. I tried some inks. I tried some Mr. Weathering Color stuff. I wasn't really happy with anything I was getting. So all that kind of got wiped away. And what I'm going to do now is get out some liquid mask. I'm gonna try this ABT 502 mask because my usual one is toast and smells like, you know, bad ammonia ass, which is what these things smell like when they turn. This stuff doesn't smell that great, but you know, it's better than nothing, right? All right, let's zoomy zoom on in. So basically what I'm gonna do here Get a little bit of stuff on Mr. Toothpick. We're just basically going to put this stuff down sort of in between the rivets. We're not going for perfect, we're just going for placed. The problem is this stuff is when it dries and then it touches itself, it wants to pick all of it up. Now, the underside here doesn't matter anywhere near as much as this side, so this is a good place to kind of get this shit sorted out beforehand. But the idea is that I'm going to mask this stuff off with this liquid frisket, liquid mask, whatever we want to call it. 
and come in and spray a color very lightly. Not unlike what I did with the heat shielding, but hopefully a little bit lighter than that. And then when we remove all this, we'll get some nice different gradations going on here. Then I can come in and I can lay in that red putty in a few places, and we can just have a good time with it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished off all of the negative masking, exposing all of the little rivets and shit on the stabilators. This was a fun-ass process, let me tell you. Uh, it's intentionally a bit rough in places. It's intentionally, you know, a little bit, like, linked. You see, like, right here, for example, and up here. Basically areas where it's not a full grid pattern. It's missing some, so some stuff. Uh, basically, you know, these aren't perfect. And so I don't want it to be perfect as it's masked. This is another reason for the liquid frisket is it's a bit dodgy in terms of how it goes down. So... Nice, unperfect lines. Cool. Now, what am I going to spray on this? That's a really, really fucking good question. Because honestly, it's been so long, I forgot what I painted these things in the first place. But I want to put some sort of like dirtier, warmer, gray tan, metallic-y thing. So I'm going with a little bit of MRP Titanium, which is a lovely, warm metallic. Definitely warmer than these things. Little bit of dark gunship gray, also nice dirty trash gray kind of color. And a whole bunch of Mr. Rapid Thinner. And so that left me with this lovely warm mixture like this. I'll get a quick sense of how this sprays real fast. Looking at this on top of something else. really hit it hard, we're getting something kind of like that, which might be a little bit light, and we can always darken this if we need to, so fuck it. Oh yeah, that'll work nicely. See, it's got a darker thing going there, but yeah. Okay, that's cool, I like that a lot. And then just to check on the... Ooh. Yeah, kinda. Yep, that'll work nicely. And then when we put the red down for the... Hopefully when we put the red down for the heat putty, that can do some good stuff for us too. All that work just to putty some shit and then get it painted. In like 30 seconds. <laughs> A whole night at the bench. Oh well, that's the price that we pay. As a side note, I really, really like this ABT 502 uh, liquid masking stuff. It worked well, came off easily, not as elastic as some of the other stuff I've used, so kudos. Nice job. Right, let me clean this up and we will get back to it. Well, I've had to reevaluate my plan to use oils for the heat putty. I've tried a couple different oils. I even went to fucking Hobby Lobby and bought a cheap ass red oil paint to give it a shot. And it just went too thin. And when it went too thin, it started looking wrong on the on the uh, mule that I was working on. So instead, I've landed on another option. Good old acrylic paint, specifically Vallejo. And in this case, red. Hey, how about that? And whole red just to, you know, get it. More to that sort of, you know, primer red, putty red kind of tone. 
And now the fun part is going to be putting it onto this fucking shit. So I don't think I want to go all the way and just do everything all the, all the time, right? But I want to put a little bit of this stuff in some places. So specifically, I want some right up here on this line. doesn't need to be perfect in there, we'll fix that in a minute, but we do want to get it into the actual panel line. So make sure that that is all happy. Okay. So like that, and then we just come in here with our fingers and just go boink, just to rub off any ridiculous extra. And then get a Q-tip and get it a little bit wet. Basically use the Q-tip and the acrylic to essentially do like a reverse panel line situation. So get the panel line, remove the excess, and there we go. Some red heat putty. Next up for the underside, before I can deal with the heat shielding back here and getting it all nice and sooty, I've got to deal with kind of the general grime that I've got here, and I need to seal it with a clear coat because I'm going to go in and streak the fuck out of it. Or at least that's my hope. So I have a wonderful video reference showing, you know, marine ground crews installing sparrows and shit like that on the on the underside of F4s. These F4s from this squadron at Da Nang, and they are filthy, streaked to just they look like it looks like pinstripes, look like a fucking you know Footlocker shirt, and I don't know if I can even get to that level of contrast, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And to do that, so I don't erase all the wonderful grime I've got going here, which I kind of did as I was trying to do some streaking here, like all that stuff just went away because it's all enamel, oil-based, etc. So I'm going to put down a clear coat of MRP semi-gloss. Semi-gloss will help with the streaking. The fact that it's a lacquer will help protect everything that has gone before. And yeah, that's the hope. So... This isn't going to be all over everything. Basically just, you know, the, the central areas of the wings. And the underside, like the center belly here. We don't need to go all the way up to the, you know, we don't need to go past the nose gear bay because it's not that dirty. You don't see a lot of streaking up there. So... Mainly just this tunnel area back in here. I guess because this is just where all the fluids and shit happen, right? So, kind of like that. Alright, now to start the whole heat shield thing. Now, because I'm a giant chicken, I'm not quite ready to just commit to straight up going with the whole liquefied pigment thing. Uh, I want to add it, but I don't necessarily trust it's going to provide the coverage I need to cover all the stuff and look right. So I am starting off with a mix of some Liquitex acrylic ink, black, and some isopropyl alcohol. The goal here is basically just to establish some nice black sooty stuff in here. That should dry nice and dead flat here in a moment. I love how I'll take like, you know, an hour and just pick up shit and then I turn around and it's just all fucking filthy again in like literally 10 minutes. I 
All right, so there's what we got. It's still shiny, which you, but it should flatten out here pretty soon. I hope, if not, we're gonna hit it with a flat coat. Give us something for the uh, pigment to grip when we go through here and do that. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and do some pigment work. And for this, I'm using some ammo black pigment, nothing fancy there, and some VMS airbrush thinners. I just need something to thin it with. It seems good. It's got some leveling stuff in it. Basically, just get a brush, kind of mix this shit up into a nice little slurry, and then brush, brush, brush. This will certainly flatten out as it dries too. Just has to get there. And then, just for shits and giggles. There we are with the exhaust in place. As you can see that sort of color in there. That's what this is going to sort of fade back to as it as the thinner cooks off. So, cool. I am happy with that. Okay, so now we're onto the underside and making streaks and all that kind of shit because it's the bottom of Phantom. Nobody can see it anyway. And we need to dial up the contrast just in case somebody does. And I've got, you know, archival video footage showing just how nasty the underside is. Pretty much from like this area in here. Plus, we've got reference photos showing the underside being pretty nasty in general areas. So now it's time to streak. And for this, I've tried every other color I can think of, and they just don't look right. Black looks the best for these things to me, especially on the underside where we're going for the drama. So basically, just get a little on the airbrush needle, dot it right there. Got this brush that was dipped in some mineral spirits. And then we just drag it back, just like that. That one had a little bit of stuff under it already, so got a little bit more drama than maybe it normally. These are all going to matter. Not at all if I decide to put a uh, fuel tank on this thing, which I'm probably going to do. Brush wet again, and just use it to drag those streaks out. Well, that could have gone better. <laughs> Fuck. And I hate doing streaks. It's one thing on the side of an armor vehicle, but aircraft, especially when it's a fucking white backdrop. Yeah, no thanks. Okay, got a little bit of action going on there on the on the air brake. Okay, so I think we're in a decent enough spot with the streaking. Uh, any more than this, and it's going to start turning black. And I'm just going to have to admit, there's only so far I can go on this. Uh, man, I've got the reference photos. I see how dirty and mangy the shit under here is. And I still can't force myself to go that that crazy. This seems a lot as it is. So it's just going to be what it is for the time being. And I'm also going ahead and placing the engine exhaust on here now. 
wonderful thing about this kit is that you can pretty much do this without having to commit to glue. If I say that, then it's going to be like, nope, not quite. There we go. So that is exhausts and the heat shield and all that good stuff. We've got a fuckload of streaking going on over here. Uh, the speed brakes, I am going to need to do some touch-ups on once the oil streaks dry here. I'm going to come in and kind of dirty these up a bit. But they're also going to be sitting deflected, so they won't be as immediately apparent that they're much, much cleaner. And while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and dirty up the gear struts too, because they're in need of it. And then beyond that, it's a matter of uh, you know kind of getting this thing flipped over and moving on to the upper side. But you know, for the for the most part, this is what the bottom's going to look like. Yay! Okay, so I've jumped a little bit forward in progress here mainly with things like getting the ordnance installed on the main pylons, getting the pylons installed, getting the air brakes installed, getting all the gear doors installed, pretty much all that stuff nice and sorted. So it is almost ready to flip this fucker onto its wheels for good. Thank God. I will say that I've definitely hit a point on this where there's a bit of exhaustion and a bit of ready to be done this happening. The only thing that is not finished yet, where the fuck did it go? Here it is is the centerline tank, which I'm keeping clean, uh, just, you know, based on references. There are definitely instances where you see this thing on Phantoms, and they're filthy, and their centerline tank is nice and shiny. Uh, fresh one got put on, who knows? But I think it's a nice contrast to everything else going on. Kind of fits well with, like, you know, I got some shiny rocket pods, etc., and just a good balance of things. But... This thing is boring, so we're not going to really cover it in the video. Instead, I've got two last things to do before I can really put this underside to bed, and that is installing the sparrows. Now, the sparrows, again, not terribly weathered, just a little bit. Just, you know, some handling, some grime. You know, maybe they've been riding underneath for a couple missions at this point. And they're just, you know, they've seen better days. That's kind of the story that I am telling myself, at least. So, let's see, this should go like this. Pretty much. So now what we need to do is we need to go and find a little bit of ultra glue to secure these. They stick pretty well. You can actually put it on its feet uh, without any real issues, but I worry about the, particularly back here, the uh, tail fin is kind of drooping a little bit, so just give it a little bit of something to hold. And then you kind of want to line this up based on the various little protrusions of the sparrow itself. But there you go. Sparrow's nice and mounted. We can do the same thing on the other side. That we've got the right organization placement of things. And just yoink that down. And with that, I think I'm ready to call the underside pretty much wrapped up on this. Uh, I'm sure I'll have to revisit down here at some point in the future, but there we go. Ordnance, exhaust staining, filth all over the underside. It's not looking too shabby. So with that, uh, I think just for the sake of timing and whatnot, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode 13. And we're just going to say that this is all about the underside and getting the underside sorted out. And next up, we'll flip this guy around and move over to the top. And so, yeah, that's a wrap for this video. Uh, you know, once again, want to thank Lionheart Hobby for tossing this kit my way to build. And if you want to check them out and experience some pretty awesome service and a great hobby shop in the Hill Country of Texas, be sure to check them out. They, of course, have the Tamiya F4B. And as I am recording this on December 11th, uh, the new Tamiya F35 is also rapidly making its way to them. So by the time this is out, they should have that in stock. 
uh, if you want what may well supplant this as the best 148 scale kit of any subject anywhere. So that's that. Thank you for watching my uh, my fun putting a bunch of skid marks and stains and shit like that on the bottom of a phantom. Be sure to keep watching as we flip it around and have a lot of fun on the upper surfaces. And as always, there's Patreon at patreon.com slash dugsmodels if you want to, you know, get a early look at episodes a few days before they go up on the YouTubes. And if not, once again, no worries. And if not, no worries. I'll still be publishing these on YouTube for the foreseeable future. So until next time, until episode 14 drops, thanks and catch y'all later.